Hi and welcome back to Glassbox writing automated protector tests. Today we're going to look at writing CSS expressions when writing element statements for a protector test. So first things first, what is CSS? Well CSS is basically the styling used to decorate the way a page looks and as a result we end up introducing certain elements like class and ID to define the way something looks. And these attributes which are added to your HTML source code is what will be used to grab the element of the web page and that is what we're going to try and do. We're going trying to locate elements on a page using CSS locator and writing various different types of expression to grab that information. So since this is a protector test video tutorial we're going to navigate to JavaScript test site and we're going to try and locate a few things on this test site using various different CSS expressions in our test. So let's go ahead and look at the test. So the first thing we're going to do is have a quick look at this configuration file. Nothing too special, we're just going to write a brand new zoo spec for it. So if we go to the zoo spec, which is at the moment empty, I'm going to go ahead and start populating this with some skeleton information. So I'm going to say describe testing the JavaScript zoo site and inside this I'm gonna uh, write my test so let's just say should test by using CSS expressions I'm going to go ahead and write a before method as well. And in this before method, all I'm going to do is navigate to my test site. So why don't we go ahead, have a look at our index page effectively and see what we can get. Well let's start off with this input box and see what it has. Well we can see that the input box well, is a type of input. So th this probably makes it a good candidate to use the tag expression. So the first CSS we're going to look at is the CSS tag. So let's go ahead and write one for this. So to write a tag is quite simply the name of the tag. But before we do that, let's have a look at how to actually write a CSS locator. So in Protector, when you write a CSS locator, you obviously ask that you're looking for an element. And when we're looking for an element by something, it's dot CSS which invokes this CSS locator and then the expression you want to use to locate something goes inside the curly brackets i.e. the place where we punch in the arguments so in this case we want to find something by tag to locate something by tag you quite simply give it the name of the tag so in this case it is input so if we have a look we can see that the name of that was input and since there's only one input tag on the entire page this is the only one it's going to find so that's kind of helpful for us in that we don't need to worry about looking for a specific one. And what we're going to do is we're just going to send some keys just to make sure that it works. And let's just say uh, text test. Right, so the next one we're going to look at, uh, well, if we just populate this, we have this dynamic text that populates when we type something and so and so on. So if we inspect this, let's see if this has anything we can use. Well, this has a class. So this probably makes this text a good candidate to see how to use a class expression when writing CSS. So what I can do is say CSS class, let's mark it. We can say element by CSS 
and the way you define a class is quite simply by using the dot operator followed by the class name. So here we've just said dot which means the following text is the name of a class and then we give it the name of a class. We use the dot operator to identify that the following text inside this expression is of type class. We can, let's close this off and in this instance let's get the text and let's print it out. So to print it out I'm going to use the then function which basically takes the return of this and then we can use it. So in this case I'm going to get the then function as a text and I'm going to print it out. That's quite simply just do a console log of the text. There you go, quite simple. Uh, for those who don't understand exactly how this works, this is explained in the previous video, but really quickly what's happening is we're getting a, a returned result of this. With In this case it's just text, i.e. it's a string. And we're using this then, which basically takes the result of whatever method is changed to and does something with it. So in this case we're taking the value of this, which is a text, and we're passing in it here and we're identifying it as text and then just printing it out into the console. Right, so moving on. The next thing I think sh we should do is try and look at this button. So we can move on from this page and try something else. So let's have a look at this button and see what we can see. Well, this button has a really important attribute, i.e. the ID attribute, which we haven't used yet. So let's go ahead and see how we use an ID attribute, or let's go ahead and see how we would write an expression to identify an ID attribute. So before I do that, I'm just going to copy this value, continue underscore button, and let's do that. So CSS ID. So let's say element by CSS. And the way we identify IDs is by using the hash symbol, i.e. this sign here, followed by the value of your ID. So the way this operates is exactly the same to the way how the class operates in that we give it some symbol that represents what we're trying to identify followed by the value. So in this case what we're saying is a hash represents ID and this is the value of that ID. So like we said we want to click on the continue button. I'm going to go ahead and actually click on it quite simply by invoking the click method. So what this will do is this will effectively we're hoping is just going to click on this button. Right, so what haven't we covered? Well, we've looked at tag, class, and ID. Uh, class and ID being the most common expression someone writes. But let's go ahead and do some kind of chaining. Chaining is where we can pass in multiple arguments at the same time as part of the same expression. So let's go ahead and try and click on this continue button, but by using a chaining. So what can we chain? Well, we can see it's inside a button tag. So if you want to say, look for a button tag, it's most likely going to click on this one first, the back button, because that back button appears first in this list, in this HTML list. So it's gonna end up clicking on that, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna click on this button instead. So one thing we can say is, find something that's got a tag of type button, which also has an ID with the value of continue underscore button. So let's do that. So we can say, element by CSS. So we said we want it to find by tag first, which is button. And then the way you identify or you chain commands is quite simply to chain it as if there was nothing difference between them. So in this case, we just said hash followed by the value, which was continue button. What this now represents is that we're trying to find something by tag button and then that same tag has an attribute of value ID which has a value of continue underscore button. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that as well. Fantastic. So assuming this works, so we've clicked on the button, what else can we do? Well, one other thing we can explore is by trying to chain nodes. In other words, look at multiple nodes or child nodes.
So what our child knows? Well, let's just say we want to get the value of this anchor link here. So let's inspect that. We can see it's an anchor link. And there's a good chance this is probably the only anchor link on the page. But let's just say we want to start from the very top. How can we get to this anchor link? Well, if we have a look, we can see that the anchor link is inside a table. So if we just collapse this for the moment, we can see that there's only one table tag. So we can say table. And we can also see that the anchor link is inside a TD tag. So we can potentially say look inside table, then look inside TD, then look inside A. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So we start with the table. And when you want to represent child loads that belong to a node, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in a second. But to represent that, we represent that by using a space. If we then set td space a, what that now means is find us a tag of type table and look at all of its child nodes, not direct descendant, but all child nodes which are of type td. And then once we found all of the td nodes, look at all nodes inside td which are of type a. So in this case, there's only one. And when you find the first one which matches this path, do something with it. So in this case, let's just get the text again. Again, I'm just going to print it out. Fantastic. So, I think there's one other type of expression we can look at which is just as common as IDs and classes and that's attribute. So what's an attribute? Uh, well really quickly when we have values inside a tag so if we look at this entire tag we've got a value of class which has a value of left and we've got another one called call span which is a value of two. So these additional values we see inside a tag are referred to as attributes. So if I were to rephrase what I just said this TD tag has two attributes class and call span. Class has a value of left, call span has a value of 2. So if we looked at on our page and let's just say we wanted to get the value of this, we wanted to print this out, this thank you message. If we inspect this, we can see that this thank you message is inside a h1 tag which has two attributes, id and class, both of which have the same value, title. So what we can try and do is print out this message by looking for it by getting an attribute this contains and a value for that attribute. So we'll actually try getting it by ID title but using an attribute selector instead. So let's do that. So if we say element by CSS and to get something by attribute it's quite simply to pass the information inside square braces like so. So what look we're looking for, the attribute we're looking for at the moment is id. And we're going to say id is equal to the value of something. Now, when you try and represent an id with a value inside an expression, you need to put it inside another set of quotation marks. But this time you need to make sure that the marks, quotation style you use are not the same. So we've used single quotation marks to represent an expression. But we want to do an attribute, we need to also say another set of quotation marks, but we can't use the same one. So the only other one we can have to use are double quotation marks, like so. So if we now pass in the value here, i.e. title, and this time we're going to do the same thing, we're just going to get the text again. That should be it. So what we're we trying to do, we're trying to get something by tag first. We're trying to get something by class, by ID. We're trying to see if we can chain two different types of identifiers into the same expression. We're trying to get something by child nodes, not necessarily direct descendants, but uh, descendants nonetheless. And we're going to try and find something by attribute value. So let's save that and run this. So to run it, the first thing I need to do is start WebDriver Manager.
and I put that to the side while it's loading up and I also need to navigate to the test so where do our DI are just to make sure we're in the right place yep we are the com file is in there so I need to run that so let's run it and see what happens fantastic looks like the test passed first time that's pretty good so if we try and match some of this stuff up now we can see that the first thing it did was type in the text and we did see it type in text the second thing it did was try to find something by class by printing out the text in this case it would have been text test and it looks like it printed it out text test the third thing we tried to do is find something by ID by clicking on a button and we were able to click on the button because we navigated to the new page. The fourth thing we tried to do was again do another page navigation by clicking on the button but this time by chaining. The fifth thing we tried to do was to get the link on the page and print it out and it looks like we were able to do that as well without any problems. And the final thing to do was to search for something by attribute which has a value and print that out as well in this case it was a thank you message and here we were able to get the thank you message so you can see that CSS tags are actually pretty powerful because we can define different type of expressions to do different things remember these things don't work in isolation in that you can use them to work in isolation but you can also combine them if you like for instance I could have said something like h1 here because we know that the title was inside a h1 and this would have meant exactly the same. So in this case, this means get something by h1 tag, which also has an attribute of ID with a value of title. We could have done similar things by combining various other things if we wanted to. So just remember the CSS expressions are actually pretty powerful because they allow you to really play with the way information is presented to you on the HTML code level. And it really lets you to dig in into the detail and be able to not necessarily write expressions that might break but expressions that should be catered for even if page changes over time. And that's it for this video folks, thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching my video. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, ciao.